Hi, welcome to Fortic. In this video, we will discuss about cooling towers, its working principle and its main components. So let's get started. The main parts of the cooling towers are motor, spray nozzles and header, PVC fillings, mesh, makeup water, overflow, connection, drain connection. When warm liquid is brought into contact with unsaturated gas, part of the liquid evaporates and the liquid temperature drops. The most important application of this principle is in the use of cooling tower. To lower the temperature of recirculated water used for condensers and heat exchangers in power plants and air conditioning units. Basically, cooling towers are used with water cooled condensers. A water cooled condenser has two parts one is the shell side, and the other is tube side. On the shell side of the condenser, there is a high pressure, high temperature vapor. And on the tube side, there is cold water. The water in the tube absorbs heat from the high temperature, high pressure vapor in the shell, due to which the tube water gets heated. The primarily function of cooling tower is to cool this heated water. The warm water coming from condenser enters through cooling tower through the cooling tower inlet. From where the water is distributed over the packing by spray nozzles or a grid of a notch, trough or pipes. Air is passed through the packing by force draft, induced draft or in some designs it is drawn through by natural convection. As you can see in the extreme right is the enormous concrete natural draft towers used mainly in conjunction with nuclear power plants where the packing occupies only the bottom section and the rest of the tower has chimney to create the flow of air. In the induced draft cooling towers, the water is separate from the top, increases its surface area which helps in better contact between air and water resulting in better and more effective evaporation process. Induced draft towers use fan at the discharge of the tower to pull the air upward through the fills. Depending on how the air enters, there are two main designs, cross flow and counter flow. In the cross flow towers, air flows horizontally through the fills, while water flows vertically downward. This means the air and water paths cross at right angle directions. The main advantage of cross flow cooling tower is lower pumping head is required because water is distributed by gravity. In the counter flow cooling towers, air flows upward through the fills while water flows downward from the top. As you can see in the walking animation, air and water move in the opposite direction. The main advantage of counter flow cooling tower is its compact design. The more compact design affect in better thermal performance of this counter flow cooling towers. So when the water is separate, it falls on PVC fillings. PVC fillings are shaped like honeycomb. When water falls from above instead of falling directly downwards, it flows slowly. At the same time, fan runs which pulls the air outside and, and pushes it across the PVC fillings. Because of the water comes down slowly, there is better and longer contact between air and water, which increases the rate of evaporation. Due to this evaporation cooling, the water in the cooling tower becomes cold. This cool water collects in the sump at the bottom from the cooling tower outlets and it is sent back to the condenser tube. In this way, the water is cooled in the cooling tower and this process continues. That's all from today's videos. If you like my video, do hit a tap on like, subscribe and share.